a think tank in the UK says too many kids are what's making the planet worse. In many black communities, for every child actually born, three others are aborted, more than double the rate among whites. Some say abortion is the number one killer in the black community. African Americans here in this country are the only ethnic group in any place on the globe that's not replacing themselves. This is, this is genocide. Hillary Clinton received the Margaret Sanger Award. This is a woman who started an organization called Planned Parenthood, and that woman called black people human weeds. An organization whose founder believed in eugenics. The goal, to rid the country of the feeble-minded, defectives. States in the United States refusing to compensate victims who were forcibly sterilized because they were deemed unfit to reproduce. If they could keep certain segments of the population from reproducing, that all the world's problems would disappear. And so we have spent the past few weeks calling and emailing politicians in California, and the silence has been astonishing. Welcome to this talk. It's called The Science Agenda to Exterminate Blacks. Uh, this is a fact-based presentation, but it is not politically correct in the status quo halls of science and medicine because they don't want this talked about. And they especially don't want it talked about by a white scientist. And I'll give you a little bit of information about my background soon so you understand uh, where, I'm, where I'm coming from and why I'm taking the steps to go public with this information. Uh, the truth is there is a concerted, organized, long-standing effort to eliminate African-Americans from the human gene pool. Not just African-Americans, by the way, but Africans. Uh, this, this is happening right now. You are being subjected to it. It's happening through multiple vectors of science, medicine, and food that I will detail here in this talk. And it's all being done covertly. So almost no one is aware of this. The entire mainstream media refuses to acknowledge this. The scientific community will say that none of this is true. And yet, if you look at the facts that I'm going to share with you and the history that's undeniable, you will see there is a concerted, organized effort to eliminate blacks, i.e. African-Americans. I'm going to use those terms interchangeably just uh, for, for brevity here but there, there is an effort to eliminate those people from the human gene pool. My background, just so you know, my name is Mike Adams. I'm known as the Health Ranger. I am a lab science director. I founded and built a world-class analytical laboratory from scratch. It is ISO accredited. It's recognized around the world for analytical science of heavy metals, and uh, food contamination, environmental contamination, and so on. We've done volunteer work, uh, testing over 600 samples of the U.S. water supply. And we've also volunteered our lab efforts to Native American tribes who have been uh, impacted by the EPA's poisoning of their rivers. So, by the way, it's not just blacks that are trying to be eliminated by the status quo. It's also Native Americans and other minority groups that are routinely targeted by not just the EPA, but other groups that we'll talk about here. Uh, I do want you to know that because I am an outspoken science whistleblower, that I am uh, maliciously attacked, defamed, lied about. Uh, I am targeted for intimidation tactics. They try to silence my words. They try to make sure that you can't hear this talk. I've been death threatened. I've been stalked. I have to live a lifestyle of extreme secrecy and I'm armed 24 seven, including right now. And this is what it takes in our world today to tell the truth about science and medicine, especially when you are uncovering a mass agenda of genocide and eugenics, which is very prevalent through our systems of science and medicine today. So I, I do want all of you to know, all of you who are watching, if you're sharing this with your friends and colleagues, I do want you to know that, that I'm, I'm putting myself at, at risk to, to say these things especially as a credible scientist of a, a, an accredited laboratory facility, which has everything to do with the heavy metals poisoning that we're going to talk about. Uh, they, they absolutely don't want this information getting out. So let's, let's start with something that we can all easily agree upon because it has been in the news everywhere, and that is the heavy metals poisoning of the predominantly black communities of Flint, Michigan. So uh, no one says that's a conspiracy theory. Right, the, the water supply 
for millions of citizens in that region, who again were predominantly black, was allowed to be deliberately poisoned with lead, a toxic heavy metal that causes bone disorders, but more importantly, it causes a kind of brain lobotomy, it causes loss of cognitive function, it reduces IQs, it uh, causes uh, heart problems and many other problems. This was deliberately allowed to poison the water supply of Flint, Michigan, knowing that that water supply served minority communities. And in fact, this was so deliberate and it was so criminal that the, the Attorney General of Michigan has so far filed at least 43 criminal charges against predominantly scientists and bureaucrats who ran teams of scientists, water quality experts and so on, many of whom have been charged with felony crimes. Now, water quality officials in Flint, Michigan were tasked with testing the water and making sure that it was you know, clean or, or safe to drink. And yet, every time they, they showed lead in the water, they covered it up. They ditched that sample, they deleted it from the spreadsheet, you know, they, they replaced it with another sample from some other source. They committed massive scientific fraud, and they did this deliberately to cover up the fact that the African-American population of Flint, Michigan, or Detroit, greater Detroit, was being systematically poisoned. And this was going on, this was going on year after year. Uh, uh, and it could be going on now in other cities across the country. What we have found in our testing is that about 6.9% of the municipal water in America is poisoned with heavy metals. We've published those numbers at naturalsciencejournal.org in a science paper that shows you the actual data. It turns out that those areas that are most affected by these toxic heavy metals tend to be those with a predominantly larger population of African Americans. So it's the minority communities that are being impacted more so than, let's say, you know, rich white communities. Getting back to the Flint, Michigan situation, we know that they knew about this and they failed to tell people. They covered it up and they allowed it to continue. They deliberately allowed millions of children and adults, senior citizens, who were predominantly black, to be poisoned with this toxic heavy metal. Would that have happened in a rich California white community? I doubt it. I doubt it. In 2007, Chicago convened a breast cancer task force to try to figure out why so many black men and women were dying of cancer. For black women, it's mostly breast cancer. For black men, it's mostly prostate cancer. And across the cancer industry, every doctor will tell you that cancers are known to be far more severe in African-American patients than, let's say, Caucasian patients. But they don't understand why. And I'll tell you why, it's a very simple reason. It has everything to do with melanin in the skin. If you have darker skin pigmentation, because your ancestors came from an, a region closer to the equator, where sun exposure is more intense, and so the melanin in the skin is designed to block UV radiation. It's a built-in sunscreen. It's actually a feature. You know, black skin is a, is a feature. It's a survival mechanism of those whose ancestors lived near the equator. But it blocks vitamin D production at the same time, you see? Because the ancestors, all of our ancestors, were outdoors people. They spent their time outdoors. They didn't live in offices. They didn't work indoors all, all day long. So they had too much sun. And so the dark skin pigmentation blocked the excessive sun and it protected them from UV radiation. Well, today we all live indoors, don't we, for the most part. Indoor lifestyles, office jobs, even people who work in hospitals are working indoors. And when black people work indoors or live indoors, they become sunlight deficient, especially because of the melanin in their skin. So now that, that same feature of their skin that blocked excessive sun radiation in, let's say, Africa. Now in New Jersey or New York, it's, it's a detriment because it's causing African-American populations to become deficient in vitamin D. And this is what's happening in Chicago and Detroit, and especially the, the more northern latitudes of, of northern United States, Canada, and so on. 
Uh, black men in the UK have very high rates of prostate cancer, and when they get diagnosed with prostate cancer, the prognosis is uh, less positive than, let's say, a white person with prostate cancer. The cancers are more aggressive, they're more deadly. The answer is lack of vitamin D, and yet in 2007, the Chicago Breast Cancer Task Force convened, I think, over 100 doctors and nurses to try to have a powwow, uh, a team effort to try to figure out why is cancer worse in black people in Chicago. And wouldn't you know it, after spending days or even weeks on this project, they couldn't come up with the truth. The truth that people with dark skin are sunlight deficient, they're vitamin D deficient, and that's why the cancer is more aggressive, because vitamin D halts cancer. And vitamin D can be purchased for a nickel a day. Every black person in Chicago, in Detroit, in New York, in the UK, could prevent cancer. About four out of five cancers, by the way, with nothing but vitamin D. And yet the cancer industry won't tell them that. So here's a case where you have a disease that is disproportionately more aggressive in blacks versus whites. And white people, they absorb sunlight more efficiently when they're outdoors. So they need less time in the sun to generate the same amount of vitamin D as a black person who needs more time in the sun. And yet nobody is telling African Americans this simple truth, nobody. This information is being denied the black community in America. And it's just, again, a very small part of the overall vector that I'm going to be continuing to reveal here that is an effort to exterminate blacks. Now let's talk about the abortion industry. I'm not gonna download politics on you about whether you think abortion should be legal or illegal or illegal in the third trimester and legal in the other two or whatever. That's your deal, that's another day, another topic. My point is that abortion ends a life and it ends uh, certainly a potential life. Um, and I say abortion ends a, a, living, a living human baby. Now, abortion centers are deliberately set up where? Predominantly black communities. Abortion messaging and abortion marketing is more aggressive toward black communities than it is white communities or, or non-black communities. The Planned Parenthood slash abortion industry needs a steady supply of black women getting pregnant and wanting to terminate those pregnancies in order for them to be able to harvest tissue and organs from partial birth abortions, which are almost all black babies. Now, a partial birth abortion, in case you're not familiar with this, is when there's a baby that could be born and could be brought into this world, is capable of, of breathing and living. It, it, it's conscious, it has, it has memories, it has sensory complexity, it has consciousness, it has feelings. And it's partially born, let's say just the head is born. And then at that moment, the abortion center murders that baby and then they harvest the organs. They will harvest the brain stem. They will harvest the lungs. They will harvest the kidneys. They will harvest the heart. And they, you know what they do with those tissues? Well, we're told they use them for medical research. It turns out most of those tissues are sold to vaccine manufacturers. And they use those tissues to grow biomass for vaccines that are then injected into other children. And this is openly admitted by the vaccine industry and the CDC. And on my website, Natural News, we've covered, we have shown screenshots of the ingredients lists of these vaccines, such as chickenpox vaccines, varicella, uses human fetal tissue. And that human fetal tissue comes predominantly from black babies. So it's not just that the abortion centers are set up in predominantly black communities to reduce the population numbers of black children and future black adults, but it's also that those black children are having their organs harvested in order to make vaccines that are injected into other babies. There, there is a kind of racial medical cannibalism that is taking place in America today, and it combines the evil of the Planned Parenthood abortion industry and the vaccine industry 
combines all that with an overlay of eugenics and genocide. And by the way, if you don't think that abortion is tied to a history of eugenics and genocide, you need to read the history of Margaret Sanger, one of the key founders of Planned Parenthood, who called black people human weeds, and she said that it's better to kill black babies in the womb so that they don't become adults. And I'm paraphrasing that, I don't know the exact quote, but it's something along those lines. She saw abortion as a key vector of exterminating the black population in our world, and that goal is being carried out today. And by the way, she was so effective with this narrative and with this obscene, twisted logic of genocide that the Nazis borrowed her narrative and her mindset and said, oh, that sounds like a good idea, let's apply it to the Jews. So Adolf Hitler and the Third Reich, their Holocaust against the Jews was modeled after the Planned Parenthood founder Margaret Sanger eugenics genocide model that continues today in America. There is a Holocaust in America today, and it's a Holocaust that specifically targets black Americans. And yet, there is virtually no outcry. Now, in case you're having difficulty believing any of this, let's go to the news. Let's go to what's being widely reported about medical experiments targeting African babies, all right? And you can find the article and the sources for this on naturalnews.com. Officials of Pfizer, a major drug company and vaccine manufacturer, are under arrest in Nigeria. And I'm going to read you a little bit here, and I apologize for the pronunciation here, but Judge Shehu Atiku in the city of Kano said that the Nigerian Pfizer head, Ngozi Idozian, and senior company officials from Pfizer, Lare Bale and Sagun Donguro, failed to appear in court in compliance with a court order that's seeking a $2.6 billion fine from Pfizer, charging that the company illegally tested an experimental antibiotic known as Trovan on children in Kano during a meningitis outbreak in 1996. So you see they use disease to test new drugs. And by the way, you'll find out they, it's, it's, the industry is spreading the disease in order to push the vaccines, and they always use Africans for their experiments. It's, it's across the board. Well, I'll give you more examples. This illegal experiment on African children led to the deaths of 11 children, and dozens of other children experienced severe harm. Now, that shouldn't surprise anyone because it rings true with the history of the Tuskegee syphilis experiments. Those experiments conducted in the United States with the approval of U.S. health authorities and government authorities was begun in 1932, and there were over 600 volunteers who were exploited by the medical system. These were black men, predominantly. They were exploited by the system. They were told they were going to receive phenomenal care, that they were going to get extra money, that they were going to be treated well. Instead, they were denied treatment so that the medical establishment, again, these are scientists, so that they could observe the progression of this disease as black men suffered and died. And this wasn't in Africa, this was on US soil. This was in the 1930s. And this is one where they got caught because there have been dozens of other examples of this kind of medical experimentation in the United States, which usually targets black people, black prisoners in particular, we could talk about the prison industry and, and how it's a business. That's another topic. But once they get people into that prison system, they then use them for medical experiments and they have done so routinely throughout American history. And if you think that the American government has gone out of its way to, to protect blacks in America, you need to go back and reread read your history. The FBI wrote a letter encouraging Martin Luther King Jr. to commit suicide. The FBI ran violent raids on, on black civil rights groups throughout the 1960s and 70s. And to this day, the FBI runs domestic terrorism operations that they call sting operations, where the FBI sets up the plan, the FBI gets the fake bombs, the FBI acquires the vehicle, whatever the agenda calls for. They'll go after you. 
And in science and medicine, they're going after you right now. So let's continue. Let me give you more evidence because I want you to judge this on the evidence. Now, and just a quick side note, you notice how the recent Ebola outbreak, well, a couple years ago, happened in Africa. Now, I don't have proof of this, but there are many in the industry of uh, the immunization industry, uh, vaccine industry, uh, holistic medicine industries who believe that those, those strains of Ebola were weaponized and were allowed to escape in certain African nations in order to assess the epidemiological impact and to test new drugs and also as a false flag to push more funding for Ebola vaccines in the United States. And that that nurse that was brought to Texas was allowed to come in and was allowed to spread Ebola to another person in Texas, which is what happened, so that they could call for more vaccines. They create a panic. They create the outbreak and then they push billions of dollars of funding for more vaccines. In Africa, there are groups that provide vaccines to young African women. And these vaccines are often disguised as tetanus shots. And this is done usually in conjunction with UNICEF, you know, the, global, the global group, UNICEF, and also Kiwanis International, which is supposed to be you know, a community group across the United States and elsewhere. They have a project that they've used to give tetanus vaccines to black women in Africa. The, the name of this project, and I kid you not, I'm not making this up, the name of the project is the Eliminate Project. The Eliminate Project. What are they eliminating? Turns out that various Catholic mission groups that are pro-vaccine and that have been administering these vaccines to young women across Africa sent some of these vaccines to laboratories for analysis of their composition. And there, they were shocked to find that a very high percentage of these vaccines are being laced with covert sterilization chemicals. This is a fact. This is openly admitted. This, in fact, they blew the whistle on this. They went public with it. The US media didn't report this. But outside the US, this is widely, widely reported. Uh, in fact, we've covered it on Natural News. Uh, the Catholic bishops in Kenya they actually urged the Kenyan Ministry of Health to block vaccines from UNICEF and the World Health Organization because the World Health Organization approves of these covert sterilization vaccines. Isn't that interesting? Now, where are these vaccines given? Are they given in Boulder, Colorado, which is predominantly white? No, no such covert sterilization chemicals in Boulder, Colorado. Are, are these vaccines found in Salt Lake City, Utah? Are they trying to eliminate Mormons? No. No such covert sterilization chemicals in Salt Lake City, Utah. Where are they found? They're found in vaccines given to young women in Mexico, Nicaragua, the Philippines, and Africa. So the covert sterilization chemicals just happen to show up in countries with either black people or brown people. And these vaccines are all approved by the World Health Organization and other such groups that operate at the global level. Isn't that interesting? Do you think that's coincidence? Because I challenge you, if you think that's coincidence, you're not connecting the dots. A few years ago in the United States, a top scientist for the CDC, Centers for Disease Control, you know, the vaccine pushing group in the government, top scientist named Dr. William Thompson went public through a legal firm, posted an admission of guilt, said that he and his colleagues while working at the CDC had taken part in a massive scientific fraud, a cover-up, where they found a 340% higher risk of autism in young African-American boys under the age of three who were given these vaccines versus non-black children a 340% increased risk of autism. Now, those of you who are watching this, if you're part of the black community, you know autism is an epidemic across black communities in America today, right? You know that, how many young, and they're mostly boys, aren't they? 
mostly boys, how many young black boys have had their brains permanently damaged by the vaccine industry with the knowledge of the CDC, the knowledge that they are harming disproportionately black children, but not so many white children. Now there are white children who are autistic, but the numbers for black children are disproportionately much higher, 340% higher. Now the CDC knew about this. They had this, this information, they knew the results and they chose to cover it up. And one of their scientists went public with it, blew the whistle. Now, the entire mainstream media in America, NPR, Washington Post, New York Times, CNN, everybody, they all covered it up. They all blacklisted the news. They decided not to report this altogether, which shows you, by the way, that they have no journalism. They are fake news. They don't do real investigations. They chose not to cover this. Actually, I happen to know they were ordered not to cover this. The CDC issues orders to the media, by the way. They order the media when to spread panic about outbreaks. They order the media when to not say something about dangers of vaccines. The CDC is a criminal operation. And just as a quick side note, a Democrat, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., has now called for the extradition of a CDC vaccine science fraud artist who fled the country with millions of dollars in taxpayer money and is, has been hiding out in Europe. And his name is Paul Thorson. And he worked with the CDC to fabricate fake vaccine safety studies. And he's a fugitive from justice. The CDC is a criminal organization. So they covered this up, knowing that it damaged black babies 340% more than white babies. Are you still telling me this is all coincidence? Really? What causes the damage in black children? Turns out that there are genetic differences between babies who come from predominantly African ancestry versus those of more European ancestry. And that those genetic differences offer various expressions of predisposition to clearing mercury from your body. And so many of these black babies, they can't clear mercury out as quickly as the white babies. And when they're all injected with mercury, which is what happens because thimerosal is a mercury preservative still used in vaccines given to pregnant women in America and given to children in America, the white babies can clear out the mercury very quickly and they suffer little or no damage most of the time. The black babies, the mercury continues to circulate in their bodies and brains for days or weeks, sometimes months. And they can be permanently harmed and brain damaged and they can be made autistic and it is happening every day in America. And the vaccine industry went to Congress several years ago and got absolute legal immunity granted to their entire industry for any vaccine listed on the childhood immunization schedule. So if you're a black mother, a black father, your child, perfectly healthy, normal, has a great future, and that child, let's say they're two years old, you take them in to get vaccinated because the doctor told you to vac vaccinate your children, right? You get that child vaccinated, sometimes 48 hours later, boom, that child's brain damaged for life, autistic for life and you can't sue the manufacturer for their faulty product because Congress conspired with the vaccine companies to grant them all legal immunity. You can't even take your case to court. The US Supreme Court already ruled on that. You can't take your case to a regular court. You have to go to a secret vaccine court run by the vaccine industry that denies almost all claims. And even then, by the way, even though they deny almost all claims, the vaccine court has paid out over $3 billion to victims of vaccine damage that were proven to have been damaged by vaccines. If the truth about this came out, and if, if families of autistic children, especially in the black community, were able to really take their cases to court and seek justice through the legal system, it would bankrupt the entire pharmaceutical industry, which is what should happen, by the way. The vaccine industry specifically allows damage to happen to black babies. And that's if they survive abortion. You know, you know how hard it is to be conceived as a, as a black child and make it through gestation and, and, and be born alive and not be murdered and then to make it through the vaccines and then to make it through the psychiatric medicine and everything else. It's, 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 it's incredibly difficult just to survive. And that is on purpose because the science 
and medical establishments are working deliberately to exterminate black people from this planet, to wipe you out from human civilization. They're doing it. It's happening right now. Now, continuing with the vaccine agenda to exterminate blacks from the world, you need to know something about polio and polio vaccines. There are two ways you can get polio. One is to catch it from a wild circulating polio virus. Second way is to get it from a polio vaccine. It's a well-known phenomenon. It's called vaccine-induced polio. Now, when, when they inject children with polio or they do uh, nasal vaccines or other forms of vaccines, not all the vaccines are fully attenuated, which means weakened. They're not all fully weakened. Some of them have live viruses. So sometimes when they're giving vaccines to children in large numbers, some small percentage of those children are going to be infected with, with the disease, with polio. It's called vaccine-induced polio. Now recently, 355 children were vaccinated in Syria, Middle Eastern country, right? 355 children, uh, 355,000 children vaccinated against polio. Why were they vaccinated? Because there was a polio outbreak. What caused the polio outbreak? Polio vaccine. This was a vaccine induced polio outbreak that was then treated with more vaccines. Now, 355,000 children were then injected. If one out of a thousand children it, it catches polio from a polio vaccine, then didn't they just create 355 more children with polio? Yes, they did. And that will be reported as an outbreak and someone will call for the World Health Organization or UNICEF to come in and vaccinate, you know, a million children, whatever it takes. You see, the vaccines are the continuation of the disease that they claim to stop. Now, if you understand epidemiology, statistics, science and medicine, it is true that in a population, let's say you have a million children, and let's say polio is endemic. Let's say half the children in the country have polio. In that case, because the infection rate is so high, a polio vaccine can drastically bring down that infection rate and save far more lives than it would terminate because, because the rate of infection is so high. But that same vaccine when the rate of infection is very low, if you give that vaccine to large numbers of children, hundreds of thousands or millions, you will create more disease than you halt. The same vaccine. It all has to do with how many children are currently infected versus, uh, versus how many you're, you're actually vaccinating. If you vaccinate a lot of children who are not infected, you're gonna cause infections, you're gonna cause outbreaks. And this is what is used in Africa. This is, this is what is used across the world to keep the disease process going so they can keep manufacturing vaccines, which are, remember, made from aborted black babies. We're talking human fetal cell tissue. They take it from the babies. They take it from the abortions. Planned Parenthood sells it to these companies. And they, they put it in large vats and they inoculate it with viral strains and they grow and fester a large amount of biomass of disease material. And then they homogenize that with tissue homogenizers. They filter that. They put it into vaccine vials with other ingredients that are toxic, like aluminum or squalene or mercury. And then they inject that into other kids. We are living in a world, people, wake up and understand this. We are living in a world where they are murdering and grinding up black babies to feed them to other babies. This is like the Matrix. They are, this is medical cannibalism. It's actually happening every day. Many of these vaccines are made from human fetal tissue that's harvested from aborted black babies. And you know what? A lot of the doctors don't even know it. A lot of the pharmacists don't even know it because they've never read the ingredients of a vaccine. They don't even know. All you gotta do is go to the CDC, read the ingredients, FDA website, it's all right there. It's all, it's all out in the open, but no one, no one wants to believe it because it's too horrifying. It's too evil. A recent study funded by the CDC, literally run by the CDC, uh, using CDC money and CDC scientists, found that vaccines cause spontaneous abortions. So they're, they're pushing vaccines on the pregnant women, right? You've heard that recently? All pregnant women are encouraged to go out and get multiple vaccines, which never was taught in medicine until the last 20 years. 
Before that, doctors were told, no, 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 you never, you never vaccinate a pregnant woman. That could harm a child, you know, the unborn baby. Now they're like, oh, you're pregnant? Get, get shot up with vaccines. Take antidepressant drugs. Take chemotherapy. Just poison the crap out of your body. Don't worry. It doesn't affect the baby. But it does. Because these medical liars are genocidal, homicidal maniacs. They're, they're deceiving you. They're lying to you. They know that vaccines cause spontaneous abortions. It's just been admitted by the CDC. Now we've covered this study uh, on naturalnews.com. I want you to go there and I want you to read it and I want you to, we link directly to the journal. And I think the journal is vaccines, by the way, where this study was published. You can read it yourself. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's openly admitted by the CDC. Vaccines cause spontaneous abortions one more population control mechanism. Oh, uh, by the way, speaking of population control, let me give you a couple of websites before I get, get to the last and most shocking point in all of this. We've got three websites that you can check out where you can learn more about this every day, okay? Uh, depopulation.news, genocide.news, and eugenics.news. These are all .news domains. But again, depopulation, genocide, and eugenics, all .news. Go there, there's gonna be some overlap of articles there, but your eyes will be opened. You will come to see the truth about what's actually happening. And if you are black or African American and you're listening to this, you need to know the truth about how you are being targeted for extermination. You and your children and your grandchildren and your parents, you are all being targeted for extermination. Now, to some extent, we are all being targeted in different ways because there is a depopulation agenda that wants to reduce the entire global population to about one billion people. But it seems from observing the way they're doing this, they, they sure do want to get rid of black people first. And they're actively doing it. It's happening right now. It's right under your nose. Most people have no clue that it's going on. And you've got Black Lives Matter out there marching for social justice, completely oblivious to everything I've just said. Where, where does Black Lives Matter talking about the abortion industry or the vaccine industry or the psychiatric medication of young black kids or the autism epidemic or the use of, of black children for medical experiments? Black Lives Matter doesn't touch any of those things. They might bash some heads at some speech that they don't like Maybe take down a couple of Nazis or some white supremacists. You know, bash some white hoods out there. They might, they might have a little bit of success at that, but guess what? You're still being exterminated because it's in the food, it's in the medicine. The scientific community is working to exterminate you. Hey, your enemy is not even the Nazis and the white supremacists. It's the scientists. It's the pharmacology evildoers. It's, it's, it's the drug companies. It's the vaccine companies. It's the abortion providers. That's who's killing you. All right, in 1969, New York Times ran an article authored by Gladwin Hill. That's his name, Gladwin Hill. He's the author, you can look this up. The article is entitled, A Sterility Drug in Food is Hinted. The article cited a scientist named Paul Ehrlich, who's a depopulation advocate, as well as the key, the chief science advisor for then President Richard Nixon. And his name, the science advisor is, let's see, Lee, Dr. Lee Dubridge. And he said, quote, listen to this quote very carefully. He said, quote, population control should be the prime task of every government. Here's how they were going to accomplish this. This is all in the New York Times in 1969. I've reprinted the article in naturalnews.com. If you want to see this, you can read it for yourself. You can convince yourself I'm not making this up. This is all on the record, okay? He said, quote, the addition of a temporary sterilant to staple foods or to the water supply would be the way to achieve mandatory infertility. Did you catch that? In 1969, they called for secretly inserting sterilization chemicals into the food supply and the water supply to depopulate the planet. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's in the New York Times, 1969. Same year we landed a man on the moon, right? Advanced technology. What do they want to do with it? 
They want to exterminate blacks with it. Now, notice they called for adding this covert sterilization chemical to the food supply and the water supply. Well, what has happened since then? Lead poisoning in Flint, Michigan. It's a damaging chemical in the water supply, isn't it? It's right out of the playbook from 1969. This is part of the plan. And that's just one time they got caught. What about the tetanus vaccines in Africa that were found to be contaminated with a sterilization chemical? Same thing. They were going to hide it in the food and the water. Now they're putting it in the vaccines. It's all, it's all consistent. Oh, and by the way, that chemical that they found in the vaccines is called beta BCG. Beta BCG. Let me describe this to you, all right? Beta BCG causes the female body to have an immune system response that builds antibodies that destroy her own fetus if she gets pregnant. Do you realize that through this chemical that they secretly insert into the vaccines, they can cause a black woman's body to turn against itself and to murder its own baby in absolute violation of natural law and biblical principles and medical morality and everything else. And they were putting this sterilization chemical into these vaccines without the informed consent of the women who were being sterilized. This is evil medicine. This is evil science. This is genocide in the name of vaccines for public safety, right? That's what they tell you. Oh, this is all for public safety? While they're making an African woman's body murder her own baby before it can be born and they don't tell her about it? That's medicine? That's public safety? <laughs> That's a holocaust. It's a holocaust against blacks across our planet. Now you see, you see why, why I have to speak this truth? You, you see why? You, wasn't it Edmund Burke who said, all that's necessary for, for evil to prevail is that good men do nothing, right? I'm not gonna stand here and be silent. I'm not gonna stand here and be intimidated. Those people out there, you know, they can, they can slander and they can defame me all they want, all day and night. Call me anything. Fake news, lies, fake accusations, the truth is that you people are genocidal maniacs trying to kill black babies and turn black women against their own babies. You're trying to turn a woman's womb into a murder system through the use of covert sterilization chemicals. That is a scientific and medical fact. And that's why I'm standing here today, to speak this truth, to put it on the record so that no one can hide from this fact that this genocide is taking place right now, today. It's not 1932 Tuskegee experiment anymore. It's more advanced. Now, it's not just one vector killing black people. It's five or six different vectors. It's in the food, it's in the vaccines, it's in the medicine, it's in the psychiatric drugs. Oh, and let's get to the food because this is the final chapter of this that will absolutely shock you. Now, you're, you're hopefully aware of genetic engineering of the food supply, right? They're called GMOs or genetically modified organisms. This is a, an advanced science technique to alter the DNA of food crops in order to build in certain traits and physical properties or even chemical properties that the scientists want to put into the food. Now, I'm gonna to explain to you how your food is now being weaponized as an extermination vector to eliminate black lives, all right? Now, I'm a food scientist. I'm the author of Food Forensics. It achieved the number one best-selling science book on Amazon.com. I'm the co-author of science papers that have been published in mainstream science journals. Uh, I'm, I'm not uh, just a, a casual layperson when it comes to food science. I run a mass spec laboratory that's ISO accredited, validated, audited, inspected, passed many, many tests. Our data can be used in a court of law anywhere around the world. We do food analysis. We can search for uh, complex molecules such as pesticides or elements such as mercury or cadmium. So I, I run the lab. I am the lab science director. I know a thing or two about food science. Now, what they have invented, when I say they, I'm talking about the genetic engineers. Not only have they found a way to put these genetically engineered traits into food crops, they've now found a way to cause food crops to grow RNA fragments 
that can be specifically targeted like bioweapons to interfere with the physiological processes of targeted species that might eat the food. Now this technology is called RNA interference technology. It's relatively new uh, compared to GMOs, relatively new. It's being touted now as a technology to eliminate the use of pesticides because what they're saying is they can cause a corn crop to grow RNA fragments that will kill the insects that eat the corn without having to use pesticides like toxic chemicals that overload the insect nervous system and kill it from a nervous system breakdown and so on. This RNA interference technology is a pesticide technology, but it doesn't rely on pesticide chemicals. It relies on RNA fragments in the food. Now, what's disturbing about this is that this technology can be fine-tuned to target a specific race of humans who eat the food. I want you to follow me very carefully on this because most people have never heard of this before. They've never heard of this technology. They don't know it can be targeted by race. Food crops can be engineered right now based on existing technology to cause infertility in black people alone. That technology is a reality. It's actually, it's widely covered out there in the mainstream media, in the science media, RNA interference technology is widely covered. And they openly talk about how it can be used to target specific physiological processes of certain insect species. They can interfere with uh, uh, DNA repair or protein synthesis in insects. They can interfere with fertility or reproduction. They can interfere with uh, mobility, a nervous system interaction with, with the musculoskeletal system or depending on what animal we're talking about, other systems, endoskeleton systems. I ask you, does that technology exist? The answer is yes. It absolutely exists right now. Are they using that technology? I ask you, do a little bit of research, look at the plummeting sperm production in black men. Sperm production is plummeting in black men. Sperm production is precisely the kind of physiological process that can be targeted by RNA interference technology. Now, is that proof that the food crops are being engineered to cause sperm production to plummet in black men? No, it's not proof. But when you connect the dots of all the other things that are being done covertly, this becomes something very likely in the realm of possibility. It would take a lot of advanced testing to find this out. And guess who controls the funding? Guess who controls nearly all the science funding in America today? The federal government. The same government that allows the CDC to cover up the truth about vaccines and black children. The same government that funds Planned Parenthood abortions of black babies. The same government that covers up the EPA-induced contamination of waterways affecting Native Americans and other populations, including the Flint, Michigan, predominantly black population. This government, same government that runs the FBI, that won Martin Luther King Jr. to commit suicide. This is it's the same government. The government is at war with you. If you're, if you're black and you're watching this, the government is at war with you and they want you to exterminate it and they control the science funding, which means there will never be money for any genetic science of the food supply to uncover this truth if it were there. It would be covered up like everything else has been covered up this entire time. Just like the Tuskegee experiments covered things up in the 1930s. Nothing has changed except the technology is more advanced. The covert technology is more covert. The number of vectors through which they can kill you and cause you to have no children, cause you to have spontaneous abortions, the number of vectors is increasing. You are being targeted. And like I said earlier, to some extent, we're all being targeted. But black people are being targeted more than anyone else. So... What do we do with all this information? What do we do? Uh, do, you, do you take to the streets and bash heads? No, it doesn't, it doesn't get you anywhere. The problem is the consolidation of power in the institutions of science and medicine. The problem is that science has been taken over 
by globalist agendas and depopulation agendas and government funding. The problem is that we don't have a decentralization of science. The problem is, if you will allow me to even invoke this terminology, the problem is that we are all slaves to science tyranny as it is being operated today. We're all slaves. We're living under a science dictatorship that refuses to tell us the truth and yet targets our brothers and sisters, our children, our grandchildren with extermination agendas through medicine, through food, like everything we've talked about. That's the problem. We need independent science. We need decentralization. We need more labs like my lab that I operate independently. We don't take any government money. That's why I can tell you this truth. You think if I were on the payroll of some big corporation that used government money, do you think I could stand here and tell you this truth? No way, not a chance. It would yank your funding so fast, cover it up, sweep it under the rug. I can only stand here today because I have no financial ties to the system that's murdering all of you. Nor will I ever have financial ties to that system. I refuse to take money from satanic forces. I refuse to take money from murderous regimes. And that's what, that's what the United States government is today. It is a murderous regime. And it has been that way under President Obama, President Bush. It, it, it's beyond any single president. It has nothing to do with Trump. It's the bureaucracy, the, the momentum of genocide that is endemic in the culture of the CDC, in the culture of the FDA, in the culture of the EPA, that is beyond the reach of any one candidate or any one politician. And it, it has persisted for generations and it continues to persist and it will continue to target you and murder you and cause you disease and cause you brain damage and cause your children autism until the day comes that we the people decide to stand up and take back our liberty from this murderous regime that commits murder and genocide in the name of science and medicine. And that is what we must do. I don't think it's a goal that can be achieved through violence. And I don't call for violence because that is being afflicted against us in far too many ways. It must start with awareness. And so the only thing I ask of you watching this listening to this, even if you don't believe every chapter of the talk here, maybe you find some of them hard to believe so far. The only thing I ask of you is share this information, share this video, share this talk, have a public viewing in, in a church. Maybe you've got a black church somewhere, invite your congregation to watch this if you dare. If you wanna know the truth about this, from a, from a scientist, an independent scientist who sees what's happening and refuses to be silent and refuses to be, a, uh, to be exploited by the, the evil that exists in our world, the murderous evil in the name of science, stealing life away from black families and black mothers and uh, pursuing a, a goal of global extermination through medicine and science. It's... it's we, we cannot stand for it. We must change our future together. And we're not going to do that, by the way, by fighting with each other over skin color or race. Do not let the system divide us because the system is actually murdering us, but they're trying to keep us distracted in the meantime. They want black and white to fight against each other in the streets, don't they? <laughs> you better believe they do. They want you to not trust each other because they are the murderers. They, the system, they're murdering us all to one extent or another, but they want us to be too busy bashing each other over the head with, with baseball bats to pay attention to the real murder that's taking place on the bigger scale, the global scale of murder and genocide. Don't allow yourself to be distracted. Do not fall into the depths of racial hate for any, any, anyone. Don't, don't hate someone because of their skin color or their, their background, religion, sexual orientation, anything. Understand that it's we, the people, versus the system of murder and genocide, the, the, the scientific dictatorship that has, in one way or another, targeted us all. So we, the people, must stand together, unified, regardless of our race, unified with the, the knowledge and awareness that we have a right to live, and we have a right to have families, and we have the right to know the truth. 
And until that truth is acknowledged, we cannot be free. You can, you can break physical chains from old slave plantation days and you can have physical freedom, but now we have a new kind of enslavement. We are all chemical slaves to the covert sterilization. We are, we are victims of these systems. We, all of us, black and white, all of us. So spread the word, share this video, have the courage to tell the truth, and I will continue to do so as well. Because, because I answer to a higher power. And I know that, that one day I'm going to be judged for my actions, for what, I, for what I said or what I didn't say if I covered something up, which I refuse to do. We are going to be judged, and I refuse to go through this life knowing this dark secret and not, not sounding the alarm to those who need to know it the most. That's all that matters to me. That's why I'm doing this. So I thank you for, for listening and watching. I thank you for your time. Share this message far and wide and continue to watch naturalnews.com where I will bring you more on this topic and similar topics in the years ahead. I will continue to fight for humanity with every breath. To my last day, I will fight for humanity and that means black people and, and everybody, everybody else. We are not separate. We are not uh, at war with each other. We are the establishment is at war with us, regardless of our color. So understand that truth and thank you for your time. Take care.